Hello and welcome everyone to the beginning of yet another Priestess Circle. Um, at the beginning of every Priestess Circle, I'm Kathy Forrest, and at the beginning of all my Priestess Circles, I do a Magdalene ceremony. And um, this circle is actually going to end and they are going to emerge on her appearance day. So um, this is why we're starting today. October 28th is kind of an odd time because her appearance day is July 22nd, but it just worked out. That was her plan, not mine. It, it's always like that. So welcome. I'm very, very happy that everyone is here. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're, call, we're gonna call in sacred space. And for those of you that have played with me before, I stand up and call in the directions. You can stand or you can sit. And then after that, we um, dance. So I'm gonna play some music and um, I'm gonna launch this on YouTube. So it's, it's not the fun, cool music that we'll play in class, but it's royalty free so that we can get away with it. So here we go. All right, everybody, let's all take a big deep breath in. And as you exhale, drop your grounding cords down into the earth and feel your roots go all the way down and mingle with the roots of all of the trees and the plants all around you. And then inhale, draw that earth energy up through your body, exhale it out through the top of the head, connect with the heart of the cosmos. And inhale, draw that divine feminine cosmic energy down into your body, send it all the way down through your roots and activate that as above, so below flow. Breathing in and breathing out, activate the as within, so without as the universe, so the soul. Moving to the north, we welcome Mother Earth, the ability to stand and be in a body and be in the physical. We welcome her into our circle. Moving to the south, we welcome water and clear, clean, current, emotional energy. Moving to the west, we welcome air and mind and focus and clarity and all of our guides and angels. Moving to the east, we welcome fire and movement, divine right action. Moving to the center, we welcome, welcome the divine feminine in all her forms. We especially welcome dear Mother Mary Magdalene today and her teacher, Mother Isis, we call those beautiful feminine energies in and down through our center line. And we call up Mama Gaia to pull that energy through us. We welcome our own sweet higher selves into this circle. We ask that all these energies be with us, pray with us, dance with us today for our mutual benefit. Uh hope. All right, everyone, get up and move your bodies.
I hope everybody, whoa, it's trying to play again. I hope everybody can feel the excitement in the air. That was fun. Okay, that's what we were just doing. So I wanna to begin today, and some of you may be on the call, you may have been on the last one. This is gonna be not any different than the ones that we've done in the past. But I always like to open this one with a prayer to the Cosmic Mother. And, um, and I'm gonna check the chats a couple of times, but I may not check them much. Um, and the reason is because it kind of distracts us. Um, Okay, everybody's just saying hello. Beautiful. All right. This is taken from the Magdalene Manuscript by Judy Zion. So I just invite everyone to drop in, plug in, and just listen as I call in this sacred energy. And just see if you can feel this in your body. Oh, great mother, divine feminine, birther of the cosmos and lover unto spirit, creatrix of all matter and queen of all, worlds within worlds and those without, we call to you this hour. We are your children. Hear our call. We are the daughters and sons of your divine union, the flesh of your passion for life. You who lay with spirit, our father, in the beginning of time and brought us forth from the blessed union of spirit and matter. We are your children, the sons and daughters of your flesh and your heart. And we remember your touch and the fragrance of your essence. And we long for you. Come into our hearts and gift us the remembering. Come into our minds and open our genius. Enlighten us with your presence. Draw back the veils that we might see and hearken the doors to open, that beauty and ecstasy may live in our homes and hearts more fully. This is our hour of greatest need. We call you through fire and water, through earth and wind, through all that bears your name. We call all your lineages and all your names. Come to us. Come to us. So be it. I hope. So take a breath and just feel that loving, yummy, divine feminine energy begin to move into you and your body and our circle. So, as I said, today is not Mary Magdalene's feast day, but it traditionally falls in the sign of Leo, the sign of self-love. And the sign of Leo illuminates the mysteries of self-love connecting with the miracles. And these are miracles. If you're a woman, these are miracles. Self-confidence, self-approval, self-acceptance, and self-respect. Within our inner heart flame is the flame of divine love and acceptance, the pure essence and truth of who we are and why we are here shines brightly. We just may have covered it up. So this is the essence of Mary's teachings. It's who she was. And it was a hard fought battle and we're gonna talk about that. But when we are in our full strength and power, we know and remember our radiant shining and our divine essence. So the, these following words are from the book, A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, and it sums it up. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. 
as we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So the reason, there's two reasons. The first reason that I'm doing this is because this is the opening ceremony for a new priestess circle. But beyond that, this whole week is a big ceremony week. And we've all been through it. You know, this is we're at we're at the beginning of the last quarter of 2020. And 2020 has been a journey for everyone. A journey that was divined and planned and pre-orchestrated eons ago and has been we've been knowing this was coming for years we just didn't know what it was going to look like but as i've gotten to watch it up close and personal what i see is that all the chaos all the stirring up and the changing is shaking us to our core but it's shaken up all the things that we don't need anymore. And so now, wonder of wonders, right at the end of the cycle, right as we get ready to go into planning for the future in this last quarter, here's a Mercury retrograde. Everybody go within and get quiet. And if you try to go forward or do anything, I'm gonna trip you. So we're right here in that energy and we're getting ready for the biggest release of the season of, of the year this neck every full moon is a release ceremony but this one is like take all the stuff that's left everything you haven't purged everything that is still hanging on take it all and let it go let it go in ceremony. That's what we're moving up to and into. So if this week has felt crazy, if your body's been acting out, if it's like, it's a wake up call. It's a tap on the shoulder to go, oh, there's still some stuff. There's still some stuff left. I'm gonna release everything that doesn't serve me. So, we're here today to begin, to begin that process. And I know of no better person, no better archetypal energy than Maggie to help us through that. Um, okay, I'm just checking in, checking in. Wanted to make sure there wasn't, these are all just hellos and that's good. Welcome. So happy you're here. Okay. So let's talk about Mary for a little bit. It has been, so, you know, the story, the first story that everybody got wasn't the real one. I think most of us know this by now. Um, she had an uphill climb. And all, you know, many of us in this lifetime think we had an uphill climb. Oh my goodness. She had some very difficult experiences and she wasn't portrayed in history as the partner and the beginner of the movement of love that she was. Um, she was portrayed as a prostitute and a fallen woman. So it's been more than 30 years. I'm going to get in here and mute some people. Um, it's been more than 30 years since Pope Gregory, um, well, excuse me, since the Vatican formally proclaimed that Mary Magdalene wasn't the fallen woman of Luke's gospel. That, and that Pope Gregory the Great had created the story to further his own purposes in the Dark Ages. But two millennia of public opinion is hard to erase. The Vatican's admission of error in the 1960s hasn't really been more effective than a retraction buried at the last page of a newspaper. But what this has done 
fundamentally is Mary Magdalene has become the godmother of misunderstood females. And there's a lot of us out there. And um, she's the first woman of major importance to be intentionally and completely altered and maligned by the writers of history. Now that's taken from the expected one by Kathleen McGowan. But there's more. And I want you, you know, that's like the history we know. I want us to, to dive in a little bit deeper and just feel into this. Whether or not you believe that Magdalene had um, a partnership relationship with Yeshua matters not. She loved him. And imagine the love of your life has been pulled from your grasp and killed before your eyes. And imagine that the men around you have tried to discredit you and your spiritual wisdom from the very beginning. And imagine that these men become active in trying to erase your life and your story. Just let that sink in. Would you feel sad? Or you, would, you, would that sad grow into a deep, abiding, holy rage? Now, I don't want us to get into the anger and rage and weirdness that we've grown up with. This is a different kind. If you skip down to the third paragraph, it says anger is close to optimism. It's that kind of energy that says, I don't deserve this, I deserve better. Anger says that this atrocity has been done and anger that it's still being done. So I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And in the beginning, there was a lot of victim-y stuff. But that translated from victim-y stuff to, oh my goodness, I didn't know this happened. I thought I was the only one. I mean, that's how sheltered I was. I was a victim back when they hadn't coined the term domestic violence yet. I didn't even know that happened. But then all these women started coming to me because I was having, I was watching their kids in my home and they were sitting on my couch telling me the same story. And suddenly that seed of holy rage was planted. And I began to see, oh my goodness, this is happening everywhere. And I went on to run a domestic, a big domestic violence shelter for a very long time. That was my roots. So I understand Mary from that lens and the kind of energy she generated was, oh my goodness, this is not gonna happen on my watch. And so she doesn't go away, even with all the inner, you know, all of the pushback against her. She pops up again and again in Alexandria, in Egypt, in France. She survives the tragedy. And she goes on to move herself out of the way of all of that wrath and begin a movement of love that has encompassed the globe. She used her anger appropriately. She used it to fuel her vision and propel her to the next version of herself. That's what we're doing right now, folks. 
right in the middle of all the chaos and all the turmoil and all the crazy, we are being propelled by nature, by history, by the universe, the cosmos, by time itself to move into the next biggest version of ourself. And she can lead us there. Okay? So here's how she got there. And it's such, you know, when we think about, when I personally think about my own response to all the chaos on this planet, um, I wasn't always nice. I was a little, I mean, my moon's in Aries. I'm a battler. So I didn't behave well all the time. But Mary's <clears throat> gifts that she gives us and her tools on her path were compassion and grace, big love and big mercy. So many of you may be familiar with this book. It's called The Gene Keys. I love it. Um, it is really the 64 sections of the I Ching reworked for our new age. So all of these different keys correspond with the different strands of our DNA. So they're plugged in and you'll understand what I mean when we go through some of this because they talk to us, they change us at a soul level. So I plugged into this and I noticed that the gene key for grace is 22, the number of the goddess the number of Magdalene's appearance day and also her birthday. This is her number. This is the number of the prophetess. And this is the number for grace. So this is a place where we can go and let her speak to us all the way to our core, to our DNA. So this is the path we're gonna take. I'm gonna give you some little tidbits about grace that are found in the gene keys. And I want you to just sit back and receive and let them land. True grace is difficult to describe in words. The reason for this is that you need to experience it. It needs to happen to you in order for you to know what it truly is. We can talk about it all we want. We can ask for it all we want, but until we receive it, we really don't know. Although grace is a word that is often used in spiritual circles, it should not be used lightly. Rather, it needs to be treated with the utmost respect. Grace has to be earned through graciousness. To find graciousness in the face of suffering and perhaps find something more, holiness itself, wearing a disguise. That's what Mary had to find in all of the crazy she had to find holiness itself, wearing a disguise. It teaches us not to turn our face away from the pain of life, pain that life offers us. We are all here to be tested until we can show that faith in nature herself can never be lost again. We didn't come here for an easy ride. We came here to learn. Okay. Okay. 
Grace is a presence that descends on humanity. And I want you all to begin watching because it's descending. It's descending now. And like all Siddhis, it requires that we meet it halfway, which for humans may seem like a very long way. <laughs> this is, after all, a perfected state in which everything about you and your life will be changed permanently. When true grace descends, it wipes out all your past karma in a flash. It also wipes out the karma of your ancestors and all their ancestors. Grace softens your rough edges, puts a permanent end to your fear and leaves you in no doubt whatsoever about your divinity. That's the message of Maggie. We are all divine. It also ensures that you never again forget. It is impossible to measure in words the sheer number of blessings that grace bestows when it alights on us. One who has been touched by grace is always touched by grace. If it happened to you one millennia ago in another universe or in another incarnation, it will never leave you. It will go on bathing you again and again. To be in the presence of someone manifesting this Siddhi is to be entranced by the aura of love that surrounds them. It is something you can never forget and it will stir your own soul to seek it until you find it. Grace is the very breath of the divine. It is always there, waiting for us high above if we only persist in our sacrifices. Wherever there is oppression, there's the possibility of grace. If you can face oppression with a gracious spirit and a forgiving heart, grace will come to you sooner or later. Grace is a feminine spirit and she cannot resist giving herself to those who smile in the face of adversity. It's as if when adversity shows up, you go, oh, I remember you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. When you can get to that point, you know you're living in grace. You cannot hide from grace. Grace is your true nature. It's your inheritance. It's the soul of the world. It is also a state that is beyond the laws of our world. So no matter what's going on out there, no matter what you're being fed from whatever media outlet you're looking at, Grace is beyond all of that. It's beyond all the fear, all the negativity, all of the bickering. If grace touches you, you no longer create that karma. If grace touches you, you no longer have your own destiny either. But you become a mus musical instrument tuned and played by the gods. With grace... All human emotion is instantly transformed into love. It is not a state with which most human beings are very familiar. As a species, however, we are moving into a new epoch that will be marked by grace. She's knocking at the door. So it's almost time. As a fe feminine spirit, Grace calls upon each of us to listen and receive her message and blessings. And above all, to remember this, through Grace, the universe has but one single wish, for you to remember that you are love 
and that there is nothing in you but love. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do a guided meditation and I'm gonna give you all a chance to connect with Mary herself. And then we're gonna close with this little prayer and um, we're gonna dance again. So I invite you all to just sit back, <clears throat> relax, close your eyes, settle, settle in, take a big deep breath. And as you exhale, just let your shoulders drop. Let your body relax and your mind settle. I invite you to just stiffen all your muscles, tighten all your muscles really tight. Take a big deep breath in and exhale and release. And let your roots reestablish themselves down in the earth. And then imagine yourself walking on a sandy beach, a deserted sandy beach by the ocean. And the waves of the ocean are moving back and forth. Some of them move over your toes, wash away your footprints as you walk. And you're looking out over the waves at the sunset. And as you look out in front of you, you see a beautiful, compassionate being. And you know she's compassionate because you feel her before you see her. your heart begins to open in ways that maybe you've never experienced. And the closer she comes, the wider open your heart becomes. And so I just invite you to drop into that energy of your heart. If it helps to put your hand on your heart, go ahead and do that. And just breathe in and feel that loving energy open. And in your mind's eye, imagine yourself coming face to face with our teacher and friend, Mary Magdalene. She looks at you with loving eyes and takes your hand and you both begin to walk together. And as you walk, the love in your heart gets bigger and bigger. You don't even know why it's there or what it's about. You just know you can't stop it. And you just take some time to breathe it in and attune to that. And if you don't feel it in your physical body now, trust that it's there. Trust that you will. And I just invite you to connect with Mary right now. Ask her anything. Pour your heart out. Tell her your fears. Tell her your concerns. Tell her the things that need to go. Tell her your vision for the future.
and invite her to share her wisdom with you. Just begin wrapping up your time with her, knowing that you can come back and talk to her anytime you want. Thank her for her presence. Thank her for her wisdom and compassion that radiates out over this planet constantly. Allow the love that she is to permeate your heart and live there. Allow that fire that she ignites to burn brightly. Feel her embrace you and thank you for the thumbprint that you're leaving on this planet. And then watch as she walks back the other direction. And you turn to walk back toward the place where you came from. Letting the water wash over your feet, pondering your time with her. Begin to allow yourself to come back into this present moment. Begin coming back into your body, back into the room. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. And you can open your eyes whenever you're ready. Blessed Mother, as we ponder the gift that your life and example has given humanity, May we be blessed with your grace. May we always remember that compassion and grace are gifts to be shared. May we be reminded of the richness embedded in the fabric of our aliveness. And we, may we ever be grateful for the gift of your love. So today is the opening of another birthing cauldron, and it will conclude on Mary Magdalene's feast day, July 22nd, 2021. Mary was a prophetess in a long continuing line of them. So today, many of us are entering that nine month priestess birthing cauldron. And if there's anyone on the call that feels 
called to do that with us. We're still accepting members. Um, we'll begin our formal classes next week, and I'll be sending out an email after this for any of you that want to join. But whether you decide to do that or not, pay attention for the rest of the week, pay attention. Notice what's coming up in your life. Notice what's here that needs to go and do whatever you need to do to release it. There's another ceremony Friday night. If you don't have a place to be, be there. We're gonna do a burning bowl. We're gonna release a lot of things because that's what this cauldron is about. Pay attention, call in the sacred, call in, you know, we have a lot of reasons to be in holy rage right now, but our world is in desperate need of grace. Allow her to bring that to our world through you. That's what we came for. Okay, we're gonna get up and move again, just because I want to. <laughs> and it's fun. We're gonna anchor in all of your prayers, all of your connection that you made with Maggie. We're gonna just um, pull it all into the physical as we move our bodies. Here we go. Get up and move. Looks like there's some folks in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, thank you. Oh my goodness, was this so fun? I tell you what, this is like one of the most fun things I do. All right, everyone. So grateful that all of you showed up and we just, we did a thing. We left an imprint on this planet that can't be erased. So thank you for helping me do that. I give thanks to the elemental forces for holding space for us today. I give thanks for all of these beautiful souls that are doing their sacred work. And I close this circle in the light. All right, loves, watch your inbox. I will see you all soon. Thank you, Kathy. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. Doesn't want me to leave.